Hello everybody and welcome back to the Night Garden. I am Artemis and I'm here to talk to you about art today. So uh, we're doing things a little bit differently today. Um, I'm going to be talking to Ledge about shape hierarchy. Shape hierarchy and line hierarchy. These are things that have to do with design principles, design fundamentals. So we'll be looking at other people's artwork in order to talk about this. I asked Ledge to do some homework for me to grab some art that he liked. Mm -hmm. No, no real reason, you know, just kind of like, like I didn't ask him what he liked about it or anything like that. A lot of it is from like shows that he likes or games. We, we kind of picked some references and here we go. So um, we're going to start with Uku Ukiyo-e, which is uh, woodblock prints from Japan. Um, these were originally considered like junk art and used to like uh, wrap things to keep them safe when they were shipping things, mm -hmm. which is a really interesting, um, you know, origin story to this artwork. But uh, the whole idea here is to talk about shapes, shape hierarchy, and how to make a compelling design. So one of the things that we're going to start with is just picking out your shapes. So there's different types of shapes. There's primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. So a primary shape is literally just here. We've got positive space here. So it's being taken up by something. So we've got roughly 70% of our picture filled in with that positive space and about 30% in that negative space. Hmm. So that's your primary shape. Okay. Um, this automatically gives you something called movement, which it, it makes your eye kind of travel across the page yeah. because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's, you know, um, things that draw your eye certain ways and, you know, pushes back towards other things. Um, but that all has to do with your secondary and tertiary shapes, right? So now I'm going to switch my color. We're going to go for a red. These are your secondary shapes. So your secondary shapes break up your primary shapes. So you don't really have any defined things here. You do have the hint of some clouds. So these are technically shapes. These fade kind of like that into the background, right? Yeah. So that's your secondary shape for that. That's all that is. Okay. Um, your secondary shapes here are going to be, there's like this whooshy kind of triangle here. And then there is this big white space here. All of this here that I am circling, mm -hmm. this is all your secondary shapes. Okay. So you can see, like, it's still very simple, like triangles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, but those are all your secondary shapes. So then your tertiary shapes are all the things that break those secondary shapes up into detail. So you've got, like, these little, like, swoopy things here. Like, like shadows? Yeah, the... They're kind of shadows, but they're not really shadows in this style because everything is just shapes in this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no shading in anything. But um, the all of these little things that break this up, these are all tertiary shapes. And then you can keep going like there's fourth level shapes and fifth level shapes. <sighs> um, but for the most part, it just breaks down to first, second and third. Um, and I think what's most confusing here is that when I think of shape, I think like of triangle, rectangle, circle, right. and these are like just oblong blobs. But if they're that are that are that are kind of shape, kind of, um, because everything is a shape, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the confusing thing about it. Like if you if you were to simplify this down more than what it is, this is basically a triangle that's smushed, you mm -hmm. know, distorted. Your boats are also triangles that are just distorted. Mm -hmm. So like, like this right here, this is, you can break this down to another triangle. You know, um, this is a triangle here. This is another triangle here, you know? So yeah, 
it's all just a matter of pushing and pulling things so that they become, you know, their own unique things. That That's what primary, secondary, and tertiary shapes are. Um, these really, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to talk about, like, that type of stuff with line on something like this. So we'll do that on another piece. But another thing with tertiary shapes is that these, like, little dots here. The droplets. Yep. That would be considered a tertiary shape in both your um, your negative space and your positive space. So what your secondary shapes are doing are they're informing your primary shape. Mm. And then your tertiary shapes are informing your secondary shapes. So that, like, if you're drawing, like, but, like, I've made a square, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I do secondary shapes here... He's a Game Boy. Exactly. So you already know from your secondary shapes what this is. And then if I go with my tertiary shapes, then I can have, like, you know, Mario. You know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> but that, that it, it's as simple as that when it comes to designing. Um, and it is, it is easy to get lost into the, like, well, what shapes am I making then? Mm. Um, so I think next we are going to talk about short circuit. Johnny five. Johnny five. He's alive. Stephanie. Stephanie. So <laughs> it's almost always going to break down that your primary shape is going to be your silhouette. So you mm. basically just have this big honkin' big guy. Yeah. This whole thing, if I were to outline, I'm not going to sit here and outline this entire thing. But <laughs> if you were to basically fill this in with a, like a black and make a silhouette. Yeah. That's, that's your primary shape. Uh, so then your secondary shapes are going to be the things that inform that. So like this piece right here tells you that this is a rounded uh, rectangle, right? A mm -hmm. rounded cube of some sort. Um, and then like all of this, this is tertiary stuff inside. Mm -hmm. I would consider this a secondary shape because it's coming off of that primary shape. Um... This is a secondary shape here. The cylinder, you know, the things that break up that turn this from just a black silhouette into say that I was like adding gray mm -hmm. for my secondary shapes. Sure. That would be how I would approach that. So like if you were to do a one to one of this and just kind of copy this silhouette and then start putting in your your uh stuff in like a different color then you would say like this is a shape this is a shape this is a shape you know like just kind of breaking it down that way and then anything that you can break down in those shapes are going to be your tertiary shapes mm -hmm. many much shape exactly so like so with the treads would each individual tread be a shape or would it just be the tread as a whole this is your secondary shape these are your tertiary shapes okay so when you approach it this way it makes it a lot easier for your brain to handle trying to design something right mm -hmm. because when you're trying to look at something and just kind of go okay um, I want to design a robot. It's got eyes here, but wait, it, they're like pushed out a little bit. So I need to like, you know, like you, you're not going to be able to very easily figure out what those shapes are. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's like information overload almost. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you just go, okay, here's my silhouette. Now, how do I break this silhouette so that it looks like there are parts starting to come together? How do I make those parts look like what I want them to look like? So that's where your first, second, third comes from. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense so far? 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. Kind of speeding through things very quick. You have any questions yet, sir? No, not really. Okay. Um, so then next, we've done short circuit. Um, let's look at Studio Ghibli next. So, turn up head. It's got kind of a humanoid figure here. Um, when you're actually designing shapes, you don't want things to be even so much. That can be hard with something that's humanoid. Mm. Um, because when you're, this is going into shape hierarchy. When you've got something that's a big shape, that's where your eye immediately goes to first. Mm -hmm. um, and then your medium shapes kind of inform those big shapes. And then those small shapes kind of um, inform those medium shapes. So... Your silhouette, in terms of your primary shape, is, again, your primary shape. But when we break this down into our, our secondary shape, this is where we get into our shape hierarchy. So um, humans are hard because they're roughly at the hips. They're 50-50, right? Right. So what Ghibli did with this that makes it a little bit of a nicer design, which you see better in other shots of this, is that this is a trench coat. So when this comes down, it comes down to roughly like the knee here, right? So then your broken up shape, when it's not blowing in the wind, is roughly 70, 30. So mm -hmm. this is your small, this is your this is your small, this is your your large, and this is your medium. Mm. And then in each of those shapes, they have tertiary details, right? So you've got, like, if you consider this your one shape, then this is your primary shape of the coat, but your secondary shape for the character overall, a secondary shape. Mm -hmm. So then this is a tertiary shape. This is a tertiary shape. Your shadow shapes here. These are tertiary shapes. Because all of this is informing what's going on on this coat. Okay. Um, and you can see that in everything on this character, right? So... Like, you've got even this here. This has two shapes to it mm -hmm. because of its shadow and its light. Because right. your eye is, your eye breaks down the forms, which are just like the outlines of the actual object and the light as two different shapes. Mm hmm. So now we're moving on to this. Uh, Ugh. Opulent fellow. <laughs> um, there's a lot going on in this image. Mm -hmm. But if I turn that black and white, do mm -hmm. you see how a lot of this kind of becomes one shape? Yeah. So that's a secondary shape to this primary shape of the wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so like all of this, you would basically, if you wanted to draw this, you would find your perspective, make your wall. This is a, a shape right here. Mm -hmm. This is a shape right here. This. Is a shape right there. Mm -hmm. So those are primary shapes. And then each one would break down into their secondary shapes and tertiary shapes. Something like this, you would probably want to consider like your fourth and fifth level details <laughs> a lot more than what I've been explaining here. Um, because you've got like, if this is one shape here, then you've got um, this here would actually be one shape. 
because it's separated out from the background. Oh yeah, so it's like mid mid ground versus background, and then foreground and stuff. Yeah, and you can clearly see that from how things are shaded behind. So actually, mm-hmm. your primary shape here is going to be there's going to be one. Your background is going to have its own primary shape, which is right here, and then your midground is going to have its primary shape, which is probably something closer to all those books. To all of those too. books, yeah. So then that's how you would break this up. Um, and obviously, you know, when Ghibli designed this, you know, they didn't sit there and go, oh, I'm just going to silhouette all of this out. They designed each prop first and then figured out, how is this going to look pleasing? Probably threw a bunch of shapes together and was like, yeah, you know, these things will fit in this way mm. here before they got to their final sketch design. Mm. But that's how you you design based in layers is you you go by your your main initial shapes, how things fit into that shape, and then breaking it down so that it actually looks like something that's really physically there. Okay. Another thing that you'll notice here is that as you move further away, things get a little bit less Crisp. defined. Yes. So like you're not getting into your fourth and fifth level details up, you know, back here, you've got basically like you've got one these would be like, this would be its own shape, right? And then each of its, like... Onions or garlics. Yeah, each of its individual garlics would be its breakup of that shape. Because these are broken up just by color in mm-hmm. these smaller details, these fourth and fifth level details. And they're a little bit blurry. You know, back here, you've got this shape would be its own shape and then this thing on the shelf is clearly defined but like all you're you're getting is like there's a a couple of highlights and that's all that's that's uh showing that differently right so that's basically just your one shape Mm -hmm. and this is technically we haven't shown this yet, but on your um, on your uh, film study, mm-hmm. something that I want to talk about is the shape hierarchy stuff. You can see this really well in the turnip head because this right here this is defined, right? Mm-hmm. This is defined, but not as defined as all of this together. So this would be a tertiary shape. This is a tertiary shape. All of this, this is just a change in shade, right? So this is your shape, but this is done with value. Okay. So instead of coming in here and trying to draw like, okay, I have this rock that needs to be in perspective like this here, and then I need to have this rock like this here, and then I need to have this rock coming out of this grass here, like these are, this is your shape, so this is what you've got drawn. And then you would just, like, throw your colors in that way. This is your shape. So this is what you've got drawn. This is done with a color shift. Mm. So it makes it simpler than trying to outline everything and, you know, put every single piece that you see in the spot that you need it because you're basically saying you're, you're playing ventriloquist, right? Like... You're, you're casting something there instead of, like, trying to define everything there. Okay. 
Still with me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's move on to Klaus. So the reason why I specifically wanted to look at Klaus um, is because this is uh, Torsten Schrank, by the way, uh, who designed this character. This is uh, Jesper from Klaus. Um, this is something that talks about shape hierarchy very well. Um, if you look, there, for one, there's something that, that um, is called shape language that we'll get into at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to get into that right now because it's a different topic altogether. But um, if you look at Jesper, he's basically a giant triangle, <laughs> right? So your main shape is that silhouette that's, you know, pushed and pulled to look like an actual human. But it's basically a triangle. Right. And then your secondary shapes, you've got your... You've got a big here... Yeah, this is your big, this is your medium, and the head is your small. Because when you just boil these down to their basic shapes, this is the largest thing that you're seeing. This is the secondary thing that you're seeing. This is the smallest thing that you're seeing. That feels weird that a face would be the smallest thing you're seeing considering there's so much detail and right. expression and emotion that is asked of the face. Well, and the thing is about faces is that they will always automatically draw the eye because mm. they're they're human-like, you know? People always look at, at eyes first. They always look at faces mm-hmm. first. And that's a different topic entirely from shape hierarchy but when you're just when you're putting together a design, if you made a lot of small details here, then there's nowhere for your eye to rest, and then things get very chaotic and cluttered, and that what makes a bad design. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have you know big open expanses here, but it matches the size of the trench coat, then like that would be very, very hard to pick a spot to actually be interested in. Because there's too much happening in an even spread, mm. which makes for a boring design. Right. So a lot of what goes into design is trying to figure out how to balance those things. Um, and you do that a lot with just like, okay, this is your main shape. This is your secondary shape. This is your tertiary shape. If you break it up here, then it makes this a spot for your eye to rest. And then you've got more stuff coming up here. Like, this is your your spot where there's not a lot happening, so your eye rests here. But this has a lot of stuff happening and a different value at that. So those values also draw you up to the face, which is where people are going to look anyway. Mm. So this is what breaks this down into a good design. Sure. Okay. Um, And you can also, like, if we do talk a little bit about you know, you can see it really clearly in this this spot here, right? Because if you break this down just to their primary shapes, you've got a primary shape with these two characters in the front. Mm-hmm. They're their own shapes, but they're their they're on their own layer, right? So they are. These are a primary shape. Mm -hmm. Behind her, this entire crowd, they all kind of blend into each other. Like you can see differences in color, but they're all pretty much the same value. And they all make basically this one overarching big shape. So they are all one shape. Mm. These houses are all one shape. These ones further back, Mm -hmm. they're lighter. They're their own value. They're all one shape. The sky, level five Mm -hmm. of a primary shape, because that's all just one, one shape Mm -hmm. behind and at that point you just you don't even have any color variation here this is all just an off-white right so like 
this has to do with this getting lighter and lighter. That's something called atmospheric perspective. It's to uh, trick your eye that something is going further away mm -hmm. in space. Um, but all this breaks down into is a bunch of complicated shapes that are broken down into simpler and simpler shapes so that your overarching shape, your silhouette is a really simple, you know, shape. Like you can break this down into a triangle, a square, a cylinder, another triangle, you know, like mm -hmm. it breaks down very easy and it makes this shape for your eye to kind of follow. Um, if you want to talk a little bit about shape language here, um, these characters are, are villains of the story. They're both stubborn and, you know, she's really the mastermind. This, this character here, um, she's got a lot of triangles in her design. Triangles are sharp. They're dangerous. They're, you know, things that, you know tell you watch out mm -hmm. he's got you know more circles and very blocky squares because he's also stubborn but he's kinder than she is mm. um if you think of how these the story plays out he's the one that kind of goes for the like well should we call a truce mm -hmm. you know even if it's like well we're calling a truce in order to you know keep having the fights that we want <laughs> but uh you know it, he's he's kind of a dumb foolhardy kind of character and these characters are both kind of driven by hate but like they're both very stubborn so squares squares show stubbornness they're blocky uh they're also usually used for dependability headstrong you see a lot of tanks built with squares like tank characters mm -hmm. and stylized stuff um but yeah it, it all comes down back to those shapes they mm -hmm. go you know very very defined even though it seems like they're not at first when you're not really sure what you're looking for like it this pulls together in a way that you don't notice those design decisions mm -hmm. right so um we've got two left that you took do do you want to talk more about this is there any questions that you have do you want to see it in something a little bit less obvious uh, no, I don't think there's too many questions. Like, it's, it seems straightforward in that, like, each individual entity would be its own shape, broken down into alternate shapes and more and more shapes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty straightforward, you know, especially, like, once you, it, it's one of those things that you notice, but you don't know you notice it until it's explained, mm -hmm. right? Because this is, this is one of the, the easiest fundamentals to kind of explain. Um, so then let's, um, let's look at Final Fantasy IX. Um, I haven't really talked much about line hierarchy and unfortunately Yoshitaka Amino, this is who made the, uh, concept art for Final Fantasy IX. He kind of breaks the rules a bit with, when it comes to line hierarchy. Um, but it's the same idea as, um, as shape design and you can kind of see it in his work do you see how this line here is a lot thicker than these lines in here mm -hmm. that's because of line hierarchy so basically the the easiest way to explain li line hierarchy is that lines have weight your outer silhouettes are going to be more heavily lined than your inner details and your smallest, most details, like you'll see a lot with my art, I kind of do hatching like that. Mm. Um, you see that a lot in cartoons where you do. it's like the hard, hard outline. And then the inner details are like half the size of the thick outer outline. Exactly. You see it a lot in animation. So maybe actually this would be better to talk about with the Bebop stuff. Yeah, because you can see that a lot easier here. These outer lines are all very thick. And then the inner lines kind of get smaller. And then... This one's hard because it's such a dark... It is a dark scene. scene. And they're dark coats. Yeah. And... <laughs> so not good examples either way. Mm -hmm. But like... So... Um, a good one that you didn't call out would actually be Invader Zim. To show this yeah. too. 
um, which will pop something up on the screen, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the um, the the whole idea behind um, behind line hierarchy is the same idea as shape hierarchy is that your eyes are going to draw to something immediately. And then as you stare, you start to notice more and more. So your thickest outlines are going to be the things that outline your shapes. Your thinner outlines are going to be things that outline your secondary shapes. And then your tertiary lines are going to be things that define uh, tertiary shapes or small details that aren't making their own shapes. Mm. So, um, and again, even with something that isn't entirely lined, like we've got, you've got defined shapes here, right? You've got, um, you've got. This makes its own shape. This is a shape. This black area is all one shape. Mm -hmm. You know, they make a shape together. Yeah. That's basically a triangle. So you know that this is a dangerous situation. <laughs> so, I mean, even without taking in that there's a gun and a sword. <laughs> but, like, these, these are design situations that are carefully crafted so that you immediately know what's happening before you have a chance to absorb things in. Mm -hmm. And then as you break it down, you start to see more and more these little details. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about this a little bit with Final Fantasy IX too. You pulled a shot from the game. This is from Bermesia. Um, and there's a different thing going on with your your shape hierarchy here in your uh, perspective. Mm. So your characters look really, really small in this kind of Coliseum, mm -hmm. right? I don't remember exactly what's going on in this scene, but, you know, there's stuff that this says to me um, that I don't need to know what's going on in the scene. This this area that they're in is very large. It's larger than life. You've got, you know... The, the Burmesians are the rat people that the Freya's, uh, this character here is from. So, like, you know that this is something that's important to their society. This is nobility. This is something that, you know, it's ruined. So you've got a lot of little jagged things up here telling you, like, oh, you know, this is something that is no longer a safe space for somebody. Mm. Um you know, all these little, little things. Um, but even with these characters, you know, you've got your, this is a big, big triangle. And Vivi's a sweetheart and everything is rounded off for him. But uh, he's ultimately a big triangle because he's from a dangerous race, the mm -hmm. Black Mages. Um, you know, you've got your, this is a big detail right mm -hmm. his coat but his coat breaks down to those smaller details um you know his hat is a <laughs> medium and then his gloves would be his small mm -hmm. um or his face would be his small in this when you're looking at him from the front but does that make sense how it how it plays into environments too mm -hmm. with your shape hierarchies and everything? Yeah. Okay. I think that uh I've pretty much gone through all of the examples that you've you've picked and uh I don't know if there's much more I can say about shape hierarchy. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> all right. Um so if that if you have any questions, you know, feel free to let us know in the uh, comments below. Uh, if you liked this breakdown and kind of learning about the fundamentals of design, then uh, subscribe to the channel. You know, uh, give us a like, whatever, whatever floats your boat. So we'll be back soon. <laughs> I, as always, I hope that you all take care of yourselves, uh, drink your water and do what you can. And uh Thank you to my coffee supporters. I could not keep making content like this without you guys. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, then check out the coffee, check out the website, and check out the uh, description below the video. And uh, have a great night. Bye.